modern farming millions of silkworms for silk, silk cocoon harvesting and processing. The process of harvest and production of silk cocoons is really interesting. It's a kind of transformation of worms where they're taken care of as a moth egg and then grow into the stage where they can create silk cocoons that can be used for several products. The process of gathering the cocoons and weaving them into long strands is a long process and it's carried out by humans and machines. The first stage is rearing. During this stage, the silkworms are spread out into a clean place. These are actually the eggs that are laid by female silk moths. When these eggs are spread into a clean place, they also make sure that they're disinfected with formalin solution. This is really important for the silkworm eggs to get fed so they can hatch. So for initial feeding, they get nutritious food, which is actually chopped mulberry leaves. When they hatch, they're transferred to a tray with a process that's known as brushing. During this process, they try to maintain the temperature so they can grow without getting into the damage. This process is really sensitive because during this process, there's a high chance of damage to the silkworms, but professionals can make it right. If you like the video, please share and comment below to let us know about your feedback. After the brushing process, they spread them out evenly on a sheet and they get through a machine that has kinds of trays in a room that has temperature control according to the needs of silkworms. After that, they get them ready to be back and transfer them to the factory. They use huge boxes for the transfer so they don't lose any silkworms. In the factory, there's a farming process where they put silkworms into a farming place lined with nylon. They also put a net to control the movement of silkworms. And also, it includes the poo removal of the silkworms. Silkworms' only food is mulberry leaves. Farmers spread out the mulberry leaves onto the silkworms. For their growth, they take four meals a day, which are six hours apart. Eating a lot helps them grow faster. And when they start to grow, they become big silkworms. They start to create cocoons when they get to the age of four to five days. As they grow, they start to eat a lot, and they eat a very large amount of mulberry leaves. They can even eat whole branches of the mulberry leaves. So farmers need to grow a lot of mulberry leaves for the silkworms. When silkworms grow to the age of five days, they start to eat for up to 15 hours a day because they need more food to grow and start to create the cocoon. After that, they're covered in a net cloth. The workers in the factory start to take out the silkworms and then spread them out into the cloth and divide them. And then they cover the healthy ones with the net. After a few hours, they put the silkworms onto a honeycomb wooden board. This honeycomb wooden board is in the form of the tray. They hang up the trays into a rotating system and rotate the silkworms in it. In this process, they control the temperature between 30 to 32 degrees Celsius because that's the right temperature for silkworms. After some time, they take out the silkworm's honeycomb and put them together one by one. After that, they put them into an extracting machine that separates the silk cocoons. In the next stage, cocoons are spread out onto a paper. This process is also known as the manual sorting process where workers remove the damaged cocoons and then they pack them and transfer them to the silk factory. The workers unpack them and put them into a vast dump where there's a processing machine that transfers them into a lightning machine where they can clearly see the poor quality cocoons. So they remove them and continue processing the healthy cocoons.
Now the soaking process starts. During this process, there are only the good quality cocoons, and these cocoons are added into a processing machine where they soak them in hot water to soften them. They're then boiled in hot water, which dissolves the pupa inside. The empty cocoon then needs to be dried for about 24 hours, usually on a clean surface outdoors. This can be done by placing them on sticks or suspending from a frame made from bamboo or other brittle material. The boiled pupae are then removed from the cocoon, which leaves behind two filaments, one thread that's coarse and one that's very fine. These threads are wound together to form what we know as silk thread, or simply called raw silk, which is used in many types of manufacturing processes, such as dyeing, bleaching, and weaving. But the method of spinning silk thread is more complicated than it seems. In order to achieve a soft texture in the fibers, the raw silk has to be washed with water for hours on end before it's spun into thread. The process of washing raw silk is referred to as fixing. Fixing also ensures that the fibers are uniformly elastic, which helps when creating different types of fabrics like satin, chiffon, and jersey. The final stage of spinning is called winding. This process ushers in the final stage of the fabric's transformation into yarn. Redding, which is a chemical process that removes lingon molecules from wood fibers, reduces fiber thickness and improves combing properties and the natural appearance and feel of the finished yarn. Towards the end of this process, bales are removed from storage rooms so they can be delivered to spinning mills. Finally, yarn continues through various stages before becoming thread, which becomes the fabric that is finally sewn into clothing. <laughs>